Hey there guys, welcome to the meat shop. In this video, we're gonna be making pepperoni. Uh, we're gonna make it in a large sandwich uh, or pizza size, and we're also gonna make it in little snack sticks. Um, this was a requested video, which is awesome. I really appreciate the requests. Then I don't have to think about what you want. I just make you what you want. So uh, thank you, Joe Miklovic and Leah Tiferet Rabinovitz. I hope I got that right. Leah Tiferet Rabinovitz. Thank you guys. Uh, in the video, I'll show you the technique. Uh, I'll show you a couple tips and tricks. I'll share the recipe with you in the video and down below. So if you guys like it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe <clears throat> subscribe for more and we'll get to it all right there guys pepperoni that's what we're making pepperonis are hugely popular uh, this is going to be a fully cooked pepperoni uh, it's not going to be fermented so uh, in, in Italy you'll see lots of and all across the world it's hugely popular fermented pepperonis that they slice really thin uh, they wind up on charcuterie boards pizza salads all sorts of stuff. It's not going to be that type of pepperoni. It's going to be a fully cooked pepperoni uh, that you'd see in the deli aisle, the large stuff for sandwiches or pizza subs uh, on pizzas and the snack stick stuff that you can pick up out of the cooler and just snack on, uh, which, it's, which is a lot easier sausage to make. Somewhere down the road, I'll make you a fermented pepperoni. But uh, today it's the fully cooked pepperoni which we're gonna make out of ground beef. This is some um, lean ground, it's, well, it's about 80-20, this stuff here. And it's a combination of a bit of brisket meat, top sirloin, and trim that I had kicking around. We blended that all together, ground it up. But really, you're just aiming for an end fat ratio of anywhere from 30 on the high end to kind of no less than 10. It's hard to make a smoked sausage with less than 10% fat as they get pretty dry. So that's what you're using. You can also use, this recipe works great for venison. Uh, you can do pork. I like beef, uh, if you do just straight pork, I don't find it is as good. I like a little bit of beef in mine at least, you know, no less than 30%, all the way up to 100%. I usually make it all out of beef, 80-20. Um, and so, the equipment you'll need is I had a grinder, obviously to grind this up. If you don't have a grinder, you can pick up some ground beef from your butcher wholesale store. Uh, you'll need a stuffer, a little tote to mix in, work area, gram scale. Uh, and I'll be using these guys today. If you guys haven't seen my how to pick sausage casings, this is a mahogany collagen casing and uh, it will slip it on the horn and it'll stuff out like this. Um, reason I use these is the, then the, you have a beautiful color at the end. Uh, we're going to smoke both of these sausage and uh, the other one we'll be using is a fibrous casing. I'm soaking them in a little bit of water right now so they fit on the horn. Um, we have four kilograms of beef so that's about 8.8 uh, .8 pounds, just under nine pounds. And the ingredients in a pepperoni, the pepperoni I make at the store anyways, um, I guess the, I'll give you the fundamental ingredients in a pepperoni because uh, every recipe is a little bit different. You make this one, I'm sure you'll like it because it's pretty popular. Pepperonis are definitely one of our top 10, if not top 5 sellers in the store. But salt, black pepper, garlic, cayenne, anise and paprika are the main ingredients in most pepperonis. You're going to see those ones in every pepperoni. Um, but in mine, I add a little bit of onion powder and sugar into it. So those are kind of the two ingredients that you might not see in every recipe. Um, as it is going to be a smoked sausage, we're going to put some cure in it. So you can use a Prague powder, cure number one, Prague powder. So it's a 5% to 6 point, uh, I forget what the Prague powder is, 2.5 or 0.75% sodium nitrite. Um, because we're going to take it through the danger zone while smoking, which is above 5 degrees Celsius and below 60 degrees Celsius, 41 degrees Fahrenheit and 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So you need to have cure in it to inhibit bacteria growth during the smoking process. But the whole ingredient or the whole recipe top to bottom here, guys, is which I've mixed up ahead of time to save some time for us is salt, 15 grams per kilogram, black pepper, four grams per kilogram, which is a little bit on the higher end, but it's good. Garlic, one gram per kilogram, so it's a kind of minor flavor. Cayenne, 
Uh, so cayenne determines what kind of pepper you have, I, or uh, what type of pepperoni you have. I would describe this one as a mild pepperoni. Pretty well everyone can eat it. If I've got kids that eat it all the time and they're not crying that it's hot. So two grams per kilogram is what I use. If you want to make it hotter, double that. If you want to make it really hot, triple that and add more black pepper. So if you wanted a super hot pepperoni, you would put uh, eight, six to eight grams of cayenne per kilogram. Uh, so we got cayenne in this one, two grams per kilogram. Sugar, two grams per kilogram. Onion powder, one gram per kilogram. Anise. So when I use anise, you can get a ground anise or you can get anise seeds. I like getting the anise seeds because I find they give off, you know, when, when they're going through the smoking process, they release a little bit of oil. They give a little bit different flavor, a little bit better flavor. And you can kind of get the seeds sometimes when you're biting and you can see them. They're a little visual for, uh, for your sausage. It makes them look a little bit better. So I like anise seeds. I don't always use seeds in everything. Sometimes something like a fennel seed is maybe just a little bit too big sometimes. So I'll use ground fennel. Uh, but in this case, I find anise seeds are better. And I use them at half a gram per kilogram because they are quite strong. That half a gram per kilogram, it's, you're gonna, it's, a, it's a very strong taste. You'll taste that for sure. Paprika, three grams per kilogram. Cure, three grams per kilogram. That gives you, that lands you in your legal limit, which is 200 parts per million of cure in a cured sausage. You're actually below it by a little bit. Sodium erythrobate, a cure accelerator. I usually get asked what's cure accelerator. It basically just makes the sausage a little bit more acidic so that the curing process happens faster so that you can smoke these the same day. You can smoke these about a half hour after you've mixed them. Uh, and then a binder and water. So I got the water and spices pre-mixed out. There's the beef again. We'll just sprinkle this on. I'm excited to make this because I haven't made sandwich size stuff in a while. I'm gonna keep that for myself. Just put a little bit of water on there. And if you guys have watched my other videos, you know what to do next. You're just gonna thoroughly mix this stuff, toss it around, beat it up until it's really sticky, stick in your hand. And uh, I'll start on that and be right back when it's done and show you guys. That's good. Okay there guys, I've been tossing it around, thoroughly distributing the spices, and as you've seen in all my other videos, sticks to your hand, you're good. Um, a little tip I usually forget to give because uh, I've used these recipes so much, I kind of know how they're going to turn out, but uh, you know, I want to make sure you guys like it. The goal is to make you guys, keep you guys happy. So right now, if, if you want, you can go take a little patty and uh, throw it on the barbecue or on the grill and make sure you're happy with the seasoning combination. It's going to be, if, if you do that, it's going to be a little bit different than the end product because it doesn't have the smoke uh, and the cooking process is a little bit different. But just give this a cook and then you can decide if I want it spicier, I want more garlic, I want more pepper and all that stuff. I usually forget to do that. but. Your guys' happiness is the goal. So I'm going to load this into the stuffer. Uh, these are all the same always, you know. Um, get a handful, be aggressive, <laughs> get it in there, and uh, work it down so that there's no air pockets. That's the, that's the reason why you do that. Pound it down real good. I'll do that, and then bring it in and show you guys the stuffing process of pepperoni. Okay there guys, so I got that loaded right up, beat down, so that uh, all the air pockets are gone. And uh, let's get down there. So we're going to do the first one into the, the fibrous casing. This is a going to be like a sandwich style salami, this one. This is a 75 millimeter fibrous casing, but you guys can do it in whatever you, size you want. I would recommend for the sandwich stuff, fibrous casings, but you could do, you know, it's from 45 millimeters up to, if you wanted a real big piece of pepperoni, 105. Uh, so it's up to you guys. And all you gotta do with these is just soak them in the water for like a couple minutes, uh, basically till they're wet inside. They don't really expand. If you watch my how to pick sausage casing videos, I go into depth and detail on them and you just open them up and sleeve them over. Slide it right down to the end. And that, that other end will be pre-tied for you. And these ones I kind of like call like choking a turkey. 
Not that I expect. I've never choked a turkey for animal rights reasons, but. So you just get a firm grip on it till that sausage comes out the end. And you really want it, you don't let it go anywhere. You grip quite firmly because you want it to be right full. And uh, you have to grip really hard to get these to break. So don't hesitate to you know, give it a firm grip and uh, get that sausage casing right full. Okay, and then I usually leave myself a bit of space at the end because we're gonna have to tie it shut. So, as you can see, there's a little bit of tail here. Uh, and if you guys have hog rings or sausage crimps, you can use them here. I'm just gonna use, I have one of those, I'm not gonna use it because I'm assuming most of you guys don't have one of those at home. But all you do is kind of press it down so that, that compacts the top part. Or you can just give it a good squeeze and I give it a spin. Kind of tightens up that top end there so it's nice and loose, and, or not loose, it's nice and firm, sorry. And then I just take a piece of butcher's twine, is all you need for these. And I just give it a, kind of getting as close to the sausage there as you can. Sorry, you guys can't see this real good. I'll come to the other side. All right, so that's a, a twist. Press it down. Make sure it's good and firm and full. Piece of butcher's twine, just under there. And I kind of bring it right up into the sausage so that it stays nice and tight. And it's just a double knot. But get it good and tight. If you guys are using hog rings and you're clipping those, make sure you don't squeeze it so tight that it rips the sausage casing. Because as this cooks, it's gonna want to expand and if there's a little rip in here, down in there, when that expansion happens, it's gonna blow out the bottom of your sausage and it's gonna be wasted. And then this end here has that pre-tied knot and you'll hang that in the smokehouse just like that. So that's the sandwich sized one. And I will put on the smaller horn and we'll do some snack stick, snack stick sizes. Okay there guys, and then the other ones will go in these uh, collagen casings uh, for the snack stick size. And all you do is you open up the end like a breakfast sausage or what have you. Normally uh, this horn's just a little bit too big. So it should be able to just sleeve all on there once, but I gotta hand feed mine on. And you just feed it on and stuff. Okay there guys, and with these ones, you're just controlling the firmness like this. Unlike my bad analogy before. And you just make sure they're nice and full. Because we're gonna smoke these for a while, like right now they're nice and full, but you wanna get them that way because in the, they're gonna spend a little while in the smokehouse. And you just wanna check the firmness. These ones can be quite firm, because we're gonna cut them. We're not gonna link them. You can link them if you want, and if you are going to link them, maybe not quite as full. But let these ones get good and full because the way I do them is we will cut them in the end. And uh, they're gonna spend a while in the smokehouse, which means uh, they're gonna wrinkle up a little bit. They're gonna lose some weight, which makes them look really nice. But if they're not full enough, they'll be, the outside of the sausage casing will get kind of tough. So you wanna make sure they're good and full so they're nice and firm. All right guys, I'll just finish these off and show you. Keeping them nice and firm and full. And there we go, there's the end. So break that off, get this stuffer out of the way. Okay, so now at this point, it's really gonna depend on your smoker setup. I have a big pro smoker, and, uh, but what you basically wanna do is my smoke sticks here are the perfect length to hang in my smokehouse. You wanna figure out whatever the, the length is where the, your sausage, the bottoms of your pepperoni sticks are just a little bit away from the bottom of your smokehouse. And that'll make sense in a, in a minute here, but what I do is I take it down to the bottom of my smoke stick, so it's gonna be a length. It's gonna hang over the top of the smokehouse here. I come down and that one's just about the perfect length. So I'll just force some of this sausage up there. Without breaking the sausage casing, hopefully. All right, so that's pretty much the perfect length. So now, if that makes sense, I will hang it from here and it'll, I'll show you, it'll make sense here. So I'll just cut these all here, guys, and get them loaded into the smokehouse with some 
other stuff. And so guys, I did mention, if you did want to twist these ahead of time, uh, which I don't do, but I would just, you know, get them so that they're even length, like so. As you can see that there, hopefully. Even length. Then I just twist at the top where it's going to hang from. Pinch and twist. And then you just want to do lengths down here. So you could just go in half, then half again, or something like that. So one, two, three. Twist this guy the other way. One, two, three. Twist this guy in the middle here. One, two, three. Kind of a little bit little links, but. Twist the opposite direction. One, two, three. Uh, it's going to be small pepperoni sticks, but that's okay. So you guys just got a couple links like so. You can see that there. And then it's just going to hang from the top there. But I think that's a little bit slower than what I'll show you in the end. So now I'll load these in the smokehouse with a couple other things. Okay there guys, I've just stuck a couple in the smokehouse so that you know what we're going to do in the next step. But this is the most efficient way to hang slash smoke pepperonis. I'm on a couple Facebook pages and I've seen guys coil them on their barbecue and stuff. And if, if, if you don't have something where you can hang pepperonis in, I guess that works. But this is the best way. Uh, I leave them in big long streaks and I cut them afterwards. Um, this way when they're hung up like that it's most efficient and you can, uh, you can get the, the most amount of volume in and it's going to allow air circulation. Lots of times I see you guys uh, like, hey, like, it's, well, the outside of my sausage casing is opaque, it doesn't really have this nice mahogany color, it's kind of watery looking. Um, maybe that's because your sausage casings were touching or there wasn't enough air circulation in between. These ones are a little wider apart. I'll show you when the smokehouse is full, but this is the most efficient way to hang and smoke them and I'll show you how I do that. You just need to have them just a little bit above off the bottom of your heat source and the other half sitting on the snack stick or the smoke stick, sorry. I'll show you how. Okay there guys, there's all the jalapeno cheddar sticks hung up. Um, I got two tips for you here. Uh, so when you're racking them up on the bottom side there, I'm just gonna see if I can bring the camera in a little closer for you. You want to make sure that they are all roughly symmetrical, right? Because when we go to cut these, it's going to make a little bit of a difference. And the other tip I got for you guys is, see at the tops here, you want to make sure you press them down. Get that to focus a little better. I uh, can't focus. But you want to make sure that these are pressed down. Because if they are round, if you just set them up there like that, as this cooks, it's going to become brittle. And these are, I've had you know, a painful lesson I hope you guys can avoid by watching this. Uh, I had the, lots of them break and they winded up on the bottom of the smokehouse and they all burnt. Uh, and you see how I got them all nice and evenly spaced, guys? That allows for air circulation, so they're all going to finish cooking at the same time. But yeah, make sure that that's flat, evenly spaced, and they're roughly even at the bottom. All right there, guys. So those are the pepperoni sticks. Hopefully that makes more sense now. That's the ideal length uh, and probably the most efficient way to smoke pepperonis. Um, you got the ones we twisted pre-linked on the right hand side and the ones we'll cut when they're done smoking on the left hand side. And uh, behind them we have the big pepperoni, marked pepperoni there. We got a little other project going on the side. But uh, we're gonna run these guys in the smokehouse at 150 degrees Fahrenheit till they dry off the outside here. This guy's, these guys are pretty dry already, but this guy back here is a little wet. So we'll hit them with a fan at 150, dampers wide open till they dry off. That's gonna allow the smoke to adhere and then to develop that real nice deep dark mahogany color. Just make note of the color now and then when we come back it'll be dark red, kind of deep dark red, brown. So dry, then smoke 155 to 160 with hickory, really uh, let it roll and then 185 uh, until the internal temperature hits 160, 71 degrees Celsius. Of course, these guys are going to hit first because they're way smaller. Uh, these guys are probably going to be about three and a half, four hours total. And this guy back here is going to be about six. So I'll do, set them up, get them rolling, and we'll come back and check on them when they're done. The less you open the smoke door, the better. All right, guys, there is our snack size stick pepperonis. That big guy in the background, he isn't gonna be done cooking yet, but these little guys are done cooking. They hit an internal temperature of 71, 160. So they're good to go. Uh, I don't give them a cold water bath. I just take them off the racks here, pop them in 
whoops, pop them in the white tote and uh, let them cool down in the fridge overnight and we'll package them up tomorrow morning. So I'll do that right now and uh, we'll show you what they look like, a little cross section tomorrow. Okay there guys, so another about two and a bit uh, hours has gone by here and um, our other batch of pepperoni should be finished. So a little bit of smoke rolling through there, or steam that is. And that nice dark mahogany color all the way through. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take him and I'm gonna throw him into a tote, which I got here, and I'm gonna give him a cold water bath or an ice water bath. If you have some ice, you can preload that up with some ice water and stick him in there just to stop that cooking process immediately. So I'll do that right now, guys, and uh, show you how to do that. Normally I do doing a bunch of these at uh, once, so looks funny having just one in there at a time. But you just pop them in there. If you got, my ice machine is currently down, but normally I would fill this up with uh, cold ice water and just plunge them in there and let them cool down. But today I'll just give them a nice cold ice water bath. And then you wanna make sure to drain the water afterwards. Um, Oh, sorry. So yeah, just basically just spray it down until the sausage is submerged. And I'm gonna I'm gonna pull him out afterwards because that nice dark mahogany color, I don't want that to go away. If you leave him underwater for too long, it'll kind of become pale and opaque. But if you hang them back up afterwards and let them drip dry, that color comes right back. So I'll just do that now. Get them cold. Pop them in the cooler overnight, and then we will slice our pizza slash sub. Uh, salon or pepperoni tomorrow. So look forward to that. All right, there, guys. So I just pulled the pepperonis out of the cooler. Uh, you can see they've got a nice wrinkle on them now. That kind of makes them a little more dense. Uh, if you don't want that, you know, you can steam them during the cooking process. Let me get this to focus and. Uh, you could give them a water bath if you want a little juicier type pepperoni, but I like mine a little more dried out and with a little bit of a wrinkle like that. Uh, so they, these were the little guys that uh, we had linked up the other day, these couple back here. But uh, what I usually do, uh, because I do a bunch at a time, uh, as you can see, I got a whole bunch over here to package this morning after I'm done these store ones or these video ones here, but uh, what I do is I'll just line them all up on this end and there's some here that are still connected, the ones that were sitting over top of the smokehouse. You just nip them in between and then whatever size bag you have to package with, I use uh, 8 by 12 vacuum package bags. You just cut them to that length and it's gonna save you a boatload of time. So you just lay your bag out on top of there, so that's gonna fill two thirds of the bag, and just cut them. I'll just make these guys match here, and cut them. And there you go, you have nice little, some nice pepperoni ends there for ya. Mm-hmm. All right, so that, those are the snack sticks. Got a nice little pile of snack sticks. We'll set them to the side here. And what I'll do with these ends that uh, aren't quite full length, I'll nip those little tails off. And uh, I'll just, I cut these into little bite sized guys if they're not full size stick pepperonis. And I'll package them up like that and then they're ready to go. You can just pull them out, pop them on a charcuterie board, put them in, uh, on uh, meat trays, stuff like that. So there's the pepperoni sticks. And we still have our sandwich sized pepperoni that we made. And those guys are easy. This big old log here. Got that nice dark mahogany color from the smokehouse. And uh, we gave it that water bath so it didn't wrinkle up quite like the other little guys. As you can see, gave it that water bath to keep that moisture in there. And all I do is I go just below where we're, just above, sorry, where we made our tie. I cut that off, 
go just above the pre-tied knot, cut that off. And then I cut these guys in half. So that's a kilogram. I cut it in half again. That's about a pound. And a pound, so you got four one pound chubs. There you go guys, how does that look? I'd be pretty good on a sandwich, eh? A little bit of beef pepperoni. Let's just see here. And with these guys, I usually cut them with the casing on, or you can peel the casing right off uh, before you cut it. If you did it right, it should leave you with a little bit of that, uh, it shouldn't crumble off of there. Mmm. Mm-mm. I think I'm having a pizza sub for lunch today. If you guys want, before you package them, you can just make a slight incision with your knife. And then peel that casing off. I always kind of pull down at a, at a sharp angle and then you don't lose any meat. Sometimes guys have troubles losing meat onto these casings. But if you kind of pull down and away from the, the sausage, you won't have much of a problem. Oh boy, look at that. Oh, that looks so good. Hope you guys like it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys make it. Uh, leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you want some more tutorials like this. Thanks for watching, guys.